Hello, everybody, and welcome to the chapter 223, Chemoenzymatic Synthesis, Metal Plus Enzyme within the Unit 2.2 Design of Reaction Cascade. What I would like to show you within this chapter is that combining metals and enzymes, so two catalysis from two different worlds, can be a very exciting opportunity to realize novel type of cascades running in one pot. I also would like to show you that in spite of the maybe general assumption that these type of catalysts are not compatible with each other, but it's possible to combine them in a very effective way and to design corresponding multi-step one-pot processes. In the introduction chapter, we have learned about the concepts and also the advantages as well as the challenges to, to combine different reaction steps to one pot processes so that we don't have to isolate every intermediate before we final, um, finally prepare a corresponding product in purified form. So I would like to start also this chapter with a bit reviewing um, this introduction as a basis for um, the then later discussing the examples combining chemo and bio uh, and uh, biocatalysis to start with the background the today's a look in today's way we often produce still drugs um in in this way um as we have heard in the introduction a classic way is that one reaction step is followed by a workup step isolation that in this workup step we need solvent there are various unit operation steps, which also led to, of course, um, costs. And of course, this is the step in which often we prepare a substantial portion of waste. So from a pure definition point of view, for the synthesis of the final product, such a type of intermediate isolation is not necessary. So the ideal way would be that we overcome this limitation by combining the individual reaction steps. And of course, in order to expand the synthetic space, it would be nice to have an opportunity to combine not only chemocatalysts with chemocatalysts and enzymes with enzymes, as for example, in a fermentation process, but to combine these two different worlds of catalysis towards one pot multi-step processes using these often to be considered as different catalysts from the different two worlds, chemo and biocatalysis. This research area is a relatively young research area, and to the best of my knowledge, the first example in this area combining chemo and biocatalysis for the production, one pot production of um, organic molecules, it's back to the 80s, and the first example has been uh, published, um, to the best of my knowledge, by Hermann von Beckham and his group, who um, pioneered um, this uh, research area by developing a process combining an isomerization with a, a derivatization. So the isomerization here was an isomerization catalyzed by an enzyme, by a glucose isomerase, which catalyzes the interconversion of glucose and fructose. Uh, to each other. And when combining this enzymatic step with a hydrogenation process, it was possible then, by converting glucose to fructose, also to get an excess, preferred excess, to mannitol, for example. So this very nice example showed that in principle, it is possible to combine an enzyme with a chemocatalyst in a one-pot fashion. And it also shows us that these catalysts, at least to some extent, can be compatible with each other. In the following years, this idea to combine isomerization and derivatization has then broadly expanded. And another very interesting application, which today is, is one of the broadest applications, I would say, in the field of chemoenzymatic one pot synthesis, is dynamic kinetic resolution. Again, we have an isomerization and a modification. In this case, and this I would say is today a very 
broadly and very um, uh, thoroughly studied research area, um, a chemocatalyst can also be used for isomerizing a substrate. And then one of the two enantiomers is converted by an enzymatic step to the corresponding final enantiomerically pure, ideally, product. So what are typical chemocatalysts, what are typical enzymes which can be used in this research field? Um, the most examples focus here on the use of lipases and it also focusing on um, organic media application. So typically, this type of dynamic kinetic resolution has been realized by means of a chemocatalyst, which is suitable to um, racemize um, a certain substrate type, for example, a secondary alcohol or a secondary amine, and in combination with a lipase, then a kinetic resolution can be conducted by trapping one enantiomer, for example, the R enantiomer, out of the reaction, um, uh, racemization reaction by isolating it to a corresponding, if it's a secondary alcohol, a corresponding ester. The ester, however, does not racemize anymore. And by that way, we are able then to realize a so-called dynamic kinetic resolution, which allows us to convert a substrate, 50% R, 50% S, into theoretically 100% of the R product, thus also overcoming the limitation of 50% um, of uh, maximum yield in kinetic resolution. Why organic media? There are two reasons for this. One reason is that various chemocatalysts used for this racemization are stable in organic media, but not necessarily stable in water. Another reason is that also from, of course, also organic chemists, often the preferred um, choice is organic media. Um, and lipase are one of the very few enzyme classes which are very or can be used very effectively in organic media. So this research area and this dynamic kinetic resolution concept has been very intensively studied. And I would like to um, show you some selected examples. To the best of my knowledge, the first example is from um, Williams and Harris groups who pioneered this research field of dynamic kinetic resolution in organic media. And um, they applied a rhodium catalyst for the racemization of a secondary alcohol. And in combination with the lipase, then the secondary alcohol was isolated, one enantiomer, the R enantiomer, under formation of the corresponding ester. By means of this combination of lipase and rhodium catalyst in an organic reaction medium, it was possible to get the product with 60% conversion, 98% E. As you see from the conversion, still there was room to, of improvement because theoretically you get access to more than 90, theoretically 100% of conversion. And um, a major progress then was the switch from this rhodium catalyst to a Schwo catalyst. And this was the dynamic kinetic resolution pioneered by the group from, um, from Beckwall um, et al. And uh, in the group of the Beckwall group, um, they studied actually the application of a, rhodium, a rhodium catalyst, the Schwo catalyst, which very effectively can racemize the corresponding secondary alcohol. And by means of a lipase, then the alcohol is isolated under formation of the corresponding ester. And as you see, now the yields are much higher, up to 92% in this um, examples, and with excellent enantiomeric excess of more than 99% DE. And this has... Um, um, become a very efficient dynamic kinetic resolution process and a very nice example for the um, high process efficiency also of combining enzymes and chemocatalysts in multi-step one-pot processes. Another concept which has been pioneered by um, the Akai group then focused on the idea to use other metals and other racemization concepts, as well as um, also other types of um, alcohols. And the Akai group applied an oxovanadium catalyst for an efficient racemization. And in combination with the lipase, again, for the isolation, 
it was possible to get access to the corresponding car product with up to up to 99% yield and with up to more than 99% EV. The special feature of this oxovanadium catalyst is that in contrast to the Schwo catalyst shown before, which is based on the racemization through a redox process, interconverting the alcohol to a ketone and back to the alcohol, here with the oxovanadium catalyst, you have the release, the formal release of a hydroxy moiety and a formation of a carport cation species. And so it's a cleavage of the CO bond, not the oxidation of the alcohol to the ketone and the reverse reduction. It's a real cleavage of the carbon oxygen bond by means of the vanadium catalyst. And this cleavage is reversible. And that also is one is the reason why when you use this allylic um, substrate, for example, you can also end up, of course, with this type of chiral um, allylic regioisomeric alcohol, which then can be isolated dependent on the um, corresponding um, uh, substrate scope of the enzyme. So this is another example for very efficient um, chemoenzymatic dynamic kinetic resolution. All of these examples run in organic media. And all of these examples shown now are based on the idea to combine isomerization and a modification of an isomer. And of course, it's now the open question. Is it possible also to go beyond this type of reaction and, and process? And is it possible to ideally combine any type of chemocatalysis, any type of biocatalysis, which would broaden enormously the synthetic space, which would um, get, we could get um, uh, realized and which would be accessible. And of course, it would be in particular of interest because besides isomerization, chemocatalysis has many other opportunities, like, for example, carbon carbon bond formation. So, carbon carbon bond formation enables the construction of larger molecules, more complex molecules. And on the other hand, enzymes have also, there are many enzymes known which can be applied. However, for that, we need water. And by that combination, in water, using any type, theoretically, of chemocatalyst and any type of enzyme, we would dramatically enlarge the accessible um, synthetic space. And thus, to summarize this, and it's just the idea to combine the conversion of a prochial or racemic substrate um, with a chemocatalytic step and enzymatic step, either in this sequence or in this sequence, and then to realize access of broad variety of novel products. And I would like in particular to focus on this concept based on an initial chemocatalytic step and a subsequent enzymatic step, because in this setup, it is necessary that the enzyme used in the second step which still is in contact then with the catalyst of the previous step, um, is compatible with the catalyst. And if it runs in a concurrent fashion, of course, the enzyme also needs to be compatible with the substrate of the initial step and with the region of the initial step as well. And you have to find compatible reaction conditions. So com in comparison to a classic biotransformation, this is a very challenging um, task because now the enzyme needs to be compatible with much more components compared to a biotransformation in which you start from an isolated pure substrate. And the next question is, what is the ideal media? And of course, if we would like to make use of enzymes, the perfect media and ideal media is water. Because by definition, water allows you to use any type of enzymes you would like to have. And water is cheap. Water is non-toxic. So also from a sustainability point of view, water is a wonderful solvent. Of course, we have to take into account that later, also for the wastewater, um, good solution has to be found and that ideally wastewater treatment allows to um, uh, be um, connected with this type of wastewater. Water is a wonderful solvent and what is also exciting that many, many chemocatalysts are stable in water and can run reactions in water. So this was a big motivation to focus on this type of concept, combining the world of chemocatalysis with the world of biocatalysis 
in Aqua solvent and to realize multi-step one port reactions in, in aqueous media without the need to isolate the intermediates. And um, we, in this um, research field, it was very exciting that um, uh, we learned that it was possible to combine these two types of synthesis. And an example which um, was developed in our group is the combination of the Suzuki cross-coupling reaction as a reaction typically done um, with the chemocatalyst, with the palladium catalyst, forming a BRL moiety, can be combined with an enzymatic subsequent step under formation of the desired product in very high, with very high conversion, 91% conversion, and more than 99% E. Both steps, and this was a proof of concept that both steps can be done in aqueous media, and that the enzyme is compatible with a catalyst. And this allows us to combine such type of carbon-carbon bond formation, which organic chemistry is very strong, with enzymatic transformation, or for example, inducing chirality, in which enzymes are very strong. And also starts showing that an enormous synthetic scope and synthetic space is accessible. What is also exciting is that both reactions can be done in water. So we have the opportunity to realize such one pot multi-step processes running fully in water and aqueous reaction medium. And this allows us from a conceptual point of view to think about the use of any type of enzymes. And of course, this broadens also the scope compared to the organic solvent, because in the organic solvent, besides lipases, there are just a very few enzymes which are stable in organic solvent. So it also contributes to enlarging the synthetic space of such combinations of chemo and biocatalysis. In this example, we added the enzyme after completion of the first reaction step. We also focused in a subsequent work on concurrent one-pot synthesis, and it's also possible. However, this is a nice example in which this so-called sequential two-step one-pot process has advantage over the tandem reaction. And one reason is that in this case, you add the enzyme when the first step is completed. But the enzyme actually is sensitive towards the boronic acid. So from this perspective, it's recommendable to at first complete an org in aqueous solvent the Suzuki cross-coupling reaction prior to adding the enzyme for the second step. And another reason is the enzyme, of course, which is capable to reduce a carbonyl moiety and which is needed here to form the corresponding carbon alcohol, is also capable to reduce the carbon moiety of the substrate. So also from this perspective, in this case, it's advantageous to have a so-called sequential one-pot, two-step process running in water to the desired product. We're very much excited that in the following years, we could show that many other types of catalysts are capable to be used, chemocatalysts are capable to be used in water. And another example, um, which we published um, some years after, the Suzuki cross-coupling reaction example with combination of enzymes, is the combination of the corresponding uh, metathesis reaction with an enzymatic step. So in this case, um, the metathesis leads to the ring closure formation of the cyclopentane moiety, and then the malonic ester moiety um, is cleaved by an esterase forming the monoester, monoacid final product. And here we could show um, this work that, um, uh, that it's possible to combine also metathesis catalysts with enzymes and in a process fully running in water. Actually, this combination then has also been reported later in a different way by the Sau and Hartwig groups. And Sau and Hartwig et al. succeeded in using the metathesis catalyst now, again, um, in an aqueous system or aqueous organic biophasic medium, but in principle, an aqueous reaction medium, um, in combining it with a monooxygenase. 
And I would like to um, also mention that in this example now, we have a concurrent run, concurrently running reaction, and that means we have a tandem process, which in this case exactly offers advantages over the sequential one pot two step process. Why? Because in this step, the metathesis is reversible. So the metathesis can form the corresponding um, uh, metathesis product. But of course, it can be also cleaved again under formation of the corresponding substrates. So if you would do this reaction in a sequential step, it would depend on the equilibrium of the metathesis, how much yield you can get from the corresponding product. And this is then converted in a sequential step to the final product. However, if you are conducting the reaction in a tandem fashion, per, um, constantly the corresponding product which is formed is then removed as an in situ product removal, a reactive in situ product removal by converting it to the epoxide, thus shifting the equilibrium to the side of the corresponding desired intermediate and consequently getting a higher yield also for the final product. So this is a very nice example that tandem reactions can overcome limitations of sequential reaction steps with or without isolation by um, directly trapping the corresponding desired intermediate, which is formed under thermodynamically controlled conditions in a reversible form um, to the final product. So take into account these two examples with the Suzuki cross-coupling reaction enzymatic reduction and this metathesis reaction and enzymatic oxidation. You see that dependent case by case on the specific reaction system, one pot processes in both cases enables you to avoid workup. But in the one case, it's better to do this in a sequential one pot form. And in the other case, it's better to do this in a tandem one pot form in order to get the final product in a high yield. So it strongly depends on um, the type of reactions which you want to combine. And that also means that it's very important from the beginning on to characterize the individual reaction and to optimize individual reaction conditions, but also to characterize them in order then to decide what is the best type of combination with each other to construct the corresponding and design the corresponding one per process. There are also other types of um, tandem mode reaction uh, um, processes, and I would like to mention uh, this example um, from the Gonzalez Sabine group, um, combining again an isomerization reaction in aqueous medium now with, in a concurrent fashion, an alcohol dehydrogenase catalyzed reduction under formation of the corresponding catalyzed alcohol with 80% yield and more than 90% DE. And also this example shows very nicely that it's possible to combine the isomerization and the corresponding um, modification and selective um, formation of the product in a very efficient way in aqueous medium by combining again rotanium catalysis and enzyme catalysis. There have been many examples um, developed in the recent years, in particular in the recent 10 years. And um, there are many examples showing that it's possible to combine chemocatalysis, metal catalysis, also organic catalysis, efficiently with enzyme catalysis in aqueous reaction media. A challenge which remained over all the years was besides showing the proof of concept that it's possible to combine these reactions, besides showing and trying to identify suitable process conditions, which enables us to have a, both reactions working in a compatible fashion, also to think about process efficiency. And a proof of concept that micellar catalysis is a very efficient tool in this area and to accelerate reactions in water in general, but also, of course, in this field of chemoenzymatic one-part processes has been made by the Lipschitz group and um, jointly. The Lipschitz group and um, uh, Fabrice Galou developed a range of processes which demonstrate 
that these type of one pot processes can be conducted in a very efficient way when using this concept of micellar catalysis. In particular, the micellar catalysis is also of interest because often the substrate and the intermediate in the product are very hydrophobic. So it also allows us to use hydrophobic substrates in water, in aqueous system, for which these substrates have in general a very low water solubility. So micellar catalysis, by adding surfactants and forming such micelles, helps us a lot to improve the process efficiency and to run processes more faster and of course also with higher yield. And one of the of example of many examples, but one example shown here as a selected example is the combination of a Sonogashira cross-coupling reaction catalyzed by a palladium complex in combination with copper. And in the presence of the surfactant, of this designer surfactant, then the Sonogashira reaction works very well. And with a subsequent enzymatic reduction, the presence of an alcohol deoxygenase, the final product is obtained an excellent yield of 99% and with excellent non-selectivity of more than 99% E. So this example shows that using water as a very effective solvent, non-toxic, or economically very favorable solvent, enables us to combine, again, chemocatalysis, in this case, palladium catalysis, with enzyme catalysis in a very efficient way, in spite of using hydrophobic substrates and hydrophobic components. And this certainly is the basis also for many other type of um, processes I'm sure we will see in the future with increased also process efficiency which also then are um, giving a perspective for industrial application so these examples shown up to now all have in common that compatibility of enzymes and chemocatalysts have been achieved so what could we do if such a compatibility cannot be achieved? Of course, this happens as well. And the reaction which we faced this problem is the combination of a vaca oxidation and um, enzymatic um, reduction. And in general, if catalysts turn out not to be compatible, it's the question, what can you do? Or can you still have such a process in one pot? And again, nature provides us a wonderful solution. And this solution is shown on this um, slide. Actually, the problem with this copper oxida uh, vaca oxidation using palladium and a substantial amount of copper was that the first reaction, the conversion of styrene to the corresponding acetophenol works very well. That's a literature known process. But when we combine this with an alcohol dehydrogenase, the second step gives a very low conversion. So obviously, there's a component in the first step which strongly leads to a loss of activate activity of the enzyme. And it turned out that it's actually the copper. So even having a sequential two-step, one-pot process would not help us because whenever we add the enzyme, the copper is still around. It's not consumed. So what could we do? And as mentioned, again, nature provides us with wonderful solutions. And the solutions is compartmentalization. Also, the cell is not just one compartment. The cell consists of many compartments, and each of these compartments have different tasks. Taking this concept now into chemistry, what could it or what could we learn from that? We could learn that also we could conserve a reactor as a system in which we can operate with different compartments. So why not then compartmentalize the chemocatalyst and the enzyme? Why not using them in different compartments, but still in one reactor? And by that way, we have a separation. And there are many opportunities for such a separation. This can be done on a molecular scale, um, as shown, for example, very nicely by, um, the, um, by the Ward group um, for by embedding chemocatalysts in a protein, thus protecting it from other types of, for example, enzymes or protecting the other enzyme from the chemocatalyst, which is embedded in the protein. But it also can be done in, on, a, on a very macroscopic fashion, if you think of two phases, um, aqueous and organic phases. And the solution 
we um, found here was somewhere in between. So we wanted to use one reactor, um, but we were interested if we can separate the two reaction phases physically by a membrane, by a hydrophobic membrane, by a polydimethyloxane membrane. So actually, this is a thimble. And by means of a polydimethyloxane thimble, um, which is hydrophobic, then in the inner phase, the corresponding vac oxidation could take place in the presence of the palladium and the copper. And in the outer phase, then the enzymatic reaction could take place in the presence of the enzyme and the cofactor. The membrane is hydrophobic. The substrate, the intermediate, the products are hydrophobic. That means they can pass the membrane. However, the metal, palladium salt, copper salt, is not hydrophobic. That means the metal would remain inside and the enzyme is also hydrophilic, so it would remain outside. So they will not come into touch. And this concept actually has been developed, the concept of polydimethylsiloxane thimbles by the Bowden group, um, showing it that you can combine two different types of chemical reactions running in aqueous phase and an organic phase. But if you compartmentalize it in that way, um, it was possible to run them in one reactor. And this motivated us to look on that if we also could use this for biocatalysis, for chemoenzymatic synthesis, and actually um, applying this concept of polydimethylosiloxane thimbles, it allowed us to combine these two reactions, which are not compatible with each other, and still combine biocatalysis with chemocatalysis in one reactor. And as shown here, um, the first step runs very well, as mentioned, with about 80%, 87% selectivity. But now also using the simple concept, the second step runs very well, but 98% conversion related to the biochemical step, 95% overall conversion from styrene, and also you get access to the product with very high enantiosal selectivity. So this is one example, and of course, there are also many other examples by many groups in this field as well of chemoenzymatic one-pot synthesis under compartmentalization, and which show that we are able now to have a broad set of opportunities and which allows us also to overcome the limitation um, of um, lack of compatibility if we face this lack of compatibility and still are able to provide solutions to run a one-pot process with two or multi-step uh, reactions catalyzed by chemo as well as biocatalysis. And in general, every time the key issue is how to achieve compatibility. And with, a, with this, I would like to conclude and, and to summarize, I hope I could show you that um, the idea of combining enzymes and comp combining metals um, enables us to set up novel, efficient processes which avoid the need for intermediate isolation, which can contribute to sustainable processes, which can contribute to economically favorable processes. And I also um, hope I could show you that there are different ways to overcome this compatibility issue. Often we don't face even face the compatibility uh, problem. Often enzymes are compatible with um, chemocatalysts, but even we face compatibility issues, we have tools to overcome this which gives us now uh, the opportunity to realize a broad set and to broaden also the, the product space and the um, reaction sequence space in the future. And as mentioned, this is a research field which in the last 10 years uh, has gained broad attention. And it's um, very exciting to see all these examples from numerous groups in this field, which show that the two worlds of bio and chemocatalysis can be combined in one per processes. And with a summary, I would like to thank you very much for your attention.